I married Joe. What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married Joe. What a mind, love is blind, what a wife. Joan Davis. With Jim Backus in I Come in. Here he is, Judge. Oh, thank you, Clark. I want to talk to Joe alone. Oh, but, Judge, you just gave him a stiff sentence. How do you know he won't pull something? That's all right, Clark. Joe, sit down there. Okay. I'll be right outside, sir. Mind if I smoke, Judge? No, that's all right. Yeah. No, thank you. Now, the reason I called you here, Joe, I talked to your son Tommy before. He's mighty fond of you. Yeah. Good kid, that Tommy, a real good kid. Only 10 years old and what moxie. Chip off the old block. I know, Joe, and that's what I'm afraid of. He might wind up being a criminal like you. What's wrong with being a criminal, Judge? <laughs> My old man was a crook. His old man was a crook and his old man's old man was a crook. Being a crook in our family isn't just a career, it's a tradition. Well, that's one way of looking at it, Joe, but I'm afraid you're wrong. Now, the reason I called you here was to talk about your son. Tommy can take care of himself. He's tough, that kid, I'm telling you. Maybe too tough. Well, anyway, my sister's coming out here from Ohio next week. He can live with her. No, I'm afraid that wouldn't work. The way Tommy is now, I would have to recommend a reform school. Reform school? Judge, my sister ain't like me, honest. Give me a break. He needs an awfully strong hand. Judge, I don't want my kid going to no reform school. Please. I'll tell you what I'll do, Joe. I like Tommy and, well, if it's all right with my wife, I'll take him home with me to visit for a week until your sister arrives. Then if I see any hope for Tommy, I'll let your sister have custody of him. Thanks, Judge. You take him. And thanks again. Say, I better start getting dinner ready. <laughs> no, I'm not going to fuss. Today's the day I just take all the odds and ends out of the refrigerator, put them together and serve it. I call it Hungarian goulash. <laughs> I know it isn't Hungarian goulash, but how can you prove it? I get by with it with bread. He never knows what he's eating half the time anyway. <laughs> the only danger is he might like it too much. Ask me to make it again and I'm dead. <laughs> I think I'm dead anyway. Goodbye. Well, sweetheart, how are you? Hello, dear. Oh, I hope you never guess what I'm having for dinner tonight. Uh, 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 Joan, uh, Joan, there's, there's something I want to discuss with you. Well, what is it, Brad? Uh, well, it, it's just I, I don't know how to break it to you. Break it? <laughs> well, well, look, honey, let me put it this way. It, it seems to me that a nice home like this is... Uh, yes? Well, it would be a wonderful environment for a child. A child? Oh, Fred, darling. Yes, it would be wonderful, wouldn't it? I know I'd like coming home tomorrow and finding a kid around the place. Tomorrow? Uh, I know on such short notice it'd be tough on you. Tough? It's practically impossible. Joan, what are you talking about? A child. Maybe a little girl. No, it's a boy. What you trying to do? Run this whole thing? Why can't you be like any other man and stay in the waiting room and be told? Joan! All right, you have the baby and I'll pass out the cigars. Listen, Joan, a ten-year-old boy is coming to visit us for a week. What? That's what I've been trying to tell you. Gee, you know, I was just starting to get a yen for sour pickles. <laughs> Nine o'clock. Officer Clark and the boys should have been here by now. Listen to this, dear. The rebellious or antisocial child. This type is the result of being denied love, kindness, and understanding. This has led to a resentment of society. 
Oh, Brad, I'll bet that's what's wrong with poor little Tommy. All he needs is love. I'll get it, dear. Oh, hello, Mrs. Stevens. How do you do? This is Tommy. Well. Oh, good evening, Judge. Good evening. He's all yours. You know, he kicked me in the shins. Hey, you, come back here. Oh, that's no way to treat a child officer. All he needs is love, kindness, and understanding. Huh, Tommy? What's with this thing? What's your man? <laughs> okay. Well, I'll be running along now. Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye, Mrs. Lutton. Goodbye. Yes? Oh, I just wanted to remember this place as it was. <laughs> Well, Tommy, remember me? I'm Judge Stevens. Yeah, you're the pink who sent up my old man. <laughs> the pink, Brad. Uh, what? And I'm Mrs. Stevens, the pink's wife. The pink and I, uh, the judge and I are awfully happy to have you here with us. Well, I know we can talk about that tomorrow because it must be way past your bedtime. And you know what I'm going to do? Tell you a bedtime story. So off to Betty Bye we go. <laughs> Listen, lady, I never hit the sack before 11 o'clock. Oh, but Tommy... Uh, Joni, let me handle this. Tommy? I ain't moving till I see a lawyer. Now listen, you. Get up there, you understand? No arguments. Now get going. Ow! Oh, 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 oh. Yell like that, dear. You'll make the child feel unwanted. Unwanted? The shin, I'll be unwanted in court. I... <sighs> but nobody hits the hay this early. You're squares. Now, don't you worry, Tommy. I'm going to tell you a nice bedtime story about Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Uh, I think I'll go out for a smoke. I'll go with you. <laughs> okay. Now, once upon a time, there were three bears. I don't like them kids' stories. Well, what kind of stories do you like? Real stories, like my pop used to tell me. I can just imagine what they were like. All right, Tommy, I'll tell you a real story. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful doll by the name of Goldilocks <laughs> and three bookies. Manny, Moe, and Sam. <laughs> Manny was a great big bookie. And Moe was a medium-sized bookie. And Sam was a teensy-weetsy bookie. Only took 50-cent bets. <laughs> now, Sam wanted to be a great big bookie like Manny. He also had a yen for Manny's girl, Goldilocks. Things, they always make trouble. <laughs> One night, they're all sitting around in Joe's diner, eating their curds and whey. And in walks great big Manny, and he pulls a rod. All right, you guys. I'm taking over the south side, see? From now on, see? What I say, see, go, see? Now, if there's anybody that has any objections, let's hear from him now, see? <laughs> Mo had an objection. So medium-sized Mo says, Well, from now on, I'm taking over the south side. So, if anybody has any objections, let them say so. So... <laughs> Sam had an objection. <laughs> Another guy had an objection. <laughs> Finally, there was nobody left but Goldilocks. <laughs> He's really a sweet kid. Over the south side. Yeah. Yeah. So 
such a hectic time with Tommy. Uh, first we were going to, and, and then he, and, and then I. Well, I couldn't help it, and I didn't know that he was. Uh, Joan, Joan, simmer down. I can't understand a word you're saying. Well, it all started this morning when I invited those nice boys on the block to come over and play games with Tommy and me. <laughs> Game, Tommy. Now it's Bobby's turn to choose the game. Is the car off, little lefty? Yeah, it's outside with the motor running. Tommy, untie me, dear. It's Bobby's turn now. Okay, boss. We gotta lamb out of here and get to the hideout. Boys! <laughs> Wait a minute. Tommy, I said untie me, dear. The game is over. Let's play fair now. But we ain't made our getaway yet. I don't care, dear. Untie me this minute. That's no way to rob a bank. Tommy, I said untie me. It's Bobby's turn to choose a game. Now, we must play all games fair. All little boys should really have a turn, and then... I know we do this. Okay, men, let's make our getaway. Yes, but I got it. Oh, if you're busy, I can come back later. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Oh, thanks. There were three boys, and we were playing a game. I thought I saw those kids come out of here. You see, I've got me vegetable truck parked down the street a ways. Two of those kids come along, they ask me the price of the cauliflower, while the third one swipes a basket of tomatoes. Say, do those kids belong here? <laughs> well, I can explain. You see, my husband is a judge, and he sent this man to prison. All I want to know is, do those kids... Son, and he's going to stay here with us for a while, and then his Look, aunt is going to take him kids because we're trying to show him that it's much better to live in a place like this and be kind of... <laughs> do those kids belong here? <laughs> well, in a way, yes, but I don't really think that you should... <laughs> Who's going to pay me for the tomatoes? <laughs> Well, I don't know why I should be responsible for the tomatoes, because I... Look, I lady, somebody's got to pay me for the tomatoes. <laughs> All right, I'll pay you for them. But why should I be... I, I... That'll be one dollar and 39 cents, okay? Okay. Hey, you know, that's all right. I think I'll get one of those for my wife. <laughs> What those kids wanted with those tomatoes. How should I know, lady? I'm just chasing those kids and they climb up on your roof. I'm sure they're not going to eat the tomatoes. They can't. I see it. <laughs> oh, that's what they're doing with the tomatoes. <laughs> and that's what happened this morning, Brad. I never heard of such a thing. The little monster. Well, after the vegetable man untied me and I got Tommy home, he promised to be good. So I decided to take him to a movie. What do we have to wait here for? Well, the box office isn't open yet, dear. You won't be long. Oh, Mother, look at that big red truck. Oh, yes, it's just like the little one you have at home, isn't it, Bernard? Bernard! <laughs> There's another truck, dear. But it's not the same color, is it? No, Mother. What color is it, Precious? <laughs> Gray. And what else, sweetheart? Black. <laughs> my, there are a lot of trucks, aren't there? <laughs> mommy, Mommy, my lollipop, my lollipop! It's gone! <laughs> oh, my oh, 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 now, here's a whole dollar. Gee. Now, hold it tight. Don't lose it. Oh, Mother, look at that big dog. That's a St. Bernard, Bernard. Why did they name the dog after me? Oh, we didn't name the dog after you. We named you after the dog. I, I mean, uh, I wonder what time the box office is 
going to open. Mommy, Mommy, my dollar, it's gone. All but a nickel's worth. Oh, Tommy. There it is, that lady took it. Now, wait a minute, Bernard. You give me that. Why, you're nothing but a common pickpocket. Me, a pickpocket? Oh, no, lady, you're mistaken. It's my little boy here. <gasps> what? I never saw this thing before, my Lord. <laughs> Tommy! Please, lady, my name is Marvin, and I'm on my way to dancing school. <laughs> I think we better call a policeman. Why, this is the most ridiculous thing that I ever heard of. Call a policeman. Do you know who I am? It so happens that I am the wife of Judge Bradley J. Stevens. <laughs> Well, I am so. I'll prove it to you. Here, I'll show you my driver's license. Where is it? There. There's my lollipop. You stole it, too. <laughs> Good heavens, you're nothing but a kleptomaniac. Why, you'd steal anything. Now, this has gone far enough. The idea of me stealing a lollipop, why, I never heard of <laughs> 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 my flavor. Please, I'll show Brad, and you can't come right home and talk to me about it because I'm not home. You'll have to come here. I can't, Joan. I'm very busy. But there's a very good reason why you have to come here. <laughs> Brad, you can't keep Tommy locked in his room all night. He stays there until Clark calls for him in the morning, then off to an institution with him. Brad, I don't think we've given him a fair chance yet. The kid is hopeless. He wants to be tough. He likes to be tough. You just can't reach him. Oh, I can't believe that. Underneath, there's just a little boy. You tried love and kindness. You didn't even make a dent. Maybe we were using the wrong method. Maybe we should fight fire with fire. Huh? Brad. An idea just came into my head. A crazy, wild idea. What other kind would dare venture into it? <laughs> Brad, darling, I, I think this can work. But, Joni. Now, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go up and see Tommy, and then I'll tell him. You'll do. Huh? I wasn't sure that you were tough enough. But what you did today convinced me. You're the little man for the job, all right. What job, Mrs. Stevens? I'm tired of this kind of living. I'm sick of it, do you hear? Sick, sick, sick. <laughs> I like your kind of living. What do you mean? A life of crime. And I've planned the perfect crime. The judge is very wealthy. And he has big, fat insurance policies. Oh, they're fat. Big and fat. <laughs> and you and I are going to get rid of him. You mean murder the judge? Such a bright boy. Such a bright little boy. And so fat. You want to kill your own husband? I was going to get someone else to do it, but the judge has been so nice to me, I'd rather do it myself. And you're going to help me. Honest, Mrs. Stevens, I don't want to do nothing like that. I never done nothing like that, and my pop never done nothing like that, neither. But I thought you were tough. Very tough. In fact. Well, gee, I don't know. What? Are you with me or are you chicken? In fact. Or chicken fat. Well, good. I knew you'd do it. 
Tonight's the night. Tonight? Well, it has to be tonight, because tomorrow night I'm playing bridge with the girls, and then... Yes, tonight's the night. Come on. Isn't it wonderful that Tommy's promised to be a good boy and he doesn't have to be locked up anymore? Oh, yes, it, it sure is. Here's your milk, Angel. Oh, oh, thank you. Yes, there's nothing like a glass of warm milk before bedtime for a good long sleep. It may run longer than he thinks. <laughs> Oh, what's wrong? My stomach! Everything is growing dim. Well, you might as well know it. Tommy and I poisoned you, didn't we, Tommy? Oh! 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 Let's figure up the tape, Tommy. Oh! Oh! I'm going. Everything turning black. It's the 8,000 in bonds. Insurance, 20,000. Cash. Hey, you, you're not dead yet. How much cash you got? Oh, the pain. The pain. The $7,000. Oh, the pain. I'm going. I'm dying. Wristwatch, $100. Oh, everything's turning black. I'm going. All right, so go already. Go, man. Go, go, go. When he goes, that man is really gone. Well, come on, Tommy. Let's divvy up the tape. I don't want any. I thought you were tough. How could you do that to the judge? <laughs> Tommy, you're crying. Well, I like the judge. He was nice to me. I thought you were nice, too, but you're not. But I thought you didn't like nice people. Well, I was thought to. Go ahead and cry, Tommy. Little boys don't have to be tough all the time. Sometimes it's good for them to cry. Tommy, dear, listen. Listen to me, honey. We didn't really kill the judge. He's only fooling. Of course we were, Tommy. Gee, you're not dead. No. We were just trying to teach you a lesson. You see, Tommy, crime does not pay. I'll say it doesn't. From now on, I'm going straight. Uh, here's your wallet, Judge. Here's your pearls, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> Joni, I've certainly got to hand it to you. You handled Tommy just right. Well, you weren't so bad either. What an actor you are. What a wonderful job of dying. Well, I always did consider myself quite an actor, Joni. Mm -hmm. Mask and wig in college. <laughs> Best Hamlet they ever had. <laughs> Soliloquy. To be or not to be. <laughs> that is the question. Alas, poor Yorick. <laughs> I knew him well. <laughs> tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, creeps on this petty pace. <laughs> Wait, is there blood upon this dagger? What to do? To take arms against a sea of trouble. Brad. <laughs> By opposing end them. A pound of flesh, I say, or scuffle off this mortal coil on me dagger. Brad. Huh? What? You're dying again. <laughs> Mind-loving, blind, what a way to do.